And the NASA Orion missions, those are NASA's missions to send humans to the moon and then back to Mars by the 2030s. So what do you think the astronauts are going to do when they get to Mars? Who can raise their hand and tell me? What do they think the astronauts are going to do? Owen? Uh, build a solar panel. Build a solar panel? Why would they build a solar panel? Because we have to get heat from the, from the sun. Got to get heat from the sun? NASA is planning to send the astronauts to the moon and then to Mars. So when we get to Mars, what will be our energy resource? So the bulk of the unit is focused on renewable energy, since renewable energy is the standard that's in our Earth Science Unit in sixth grade. So students are looking at particularly solar panels and how solar panels can generate electricity for the astronauts on Mars. So the problem was, how do I make a solar panel that will get the maximum amount of energy on Mars. So the students were instructed, based on their knowledge of our solar panel and based on the video we watched about solar panels, to come up with their own solar panel design. Why would we use solar energy? Why would we lose solar energy, Emma? Because fossil fuels are non-renewable. Fossil fuels are non-renewable energy resources. What is a non-renewable energy resource? Dylan? Um, a <clears throat> non-renewable energy resource is a energy resource that once is once it's used cannot be reused. Very good. So go ahead and open your interactive notebook and set up a T chart. And what do we think the title of our T chart is going to be? Who can raise their hand and tell me? What do we think the title of our T chart is going to be? Brooklyn? Non-renewable and renewable resources. Very good. Non-renewable and renewable energy resources. So I want you to give me a definition of non-renewable and renewable energy resources and three examples. So three examples of a non-renewable energy resource, three examples of a renewable energy resource. Let's review and recap what we just talked about with energy resources. Yasser, what are the two types of energy resources? Non-renewable and renewable. Non-renewable and renewable. Shiloh, what is the definition of a non-renewable energy resource? Non <clears throat> a non-renewable energy resource is a resource that cannot be replaced with anyone. Very good. Trent, give me three examples of a non-renewable energy resource. Oil, natural gas, and coal. Very good. Savannah, what is the definition of a renewable energy resource? A resource has no limited supply and can be renewed in the human lifetime. Very good, can be renewed in a human lifetime. So the solar panel works by the, sol the sun striking the photovoltaic cell, knocking loose that electron and the electron traveling in the circuit, and then going back to the place where it was not loose from. So what we're gonna do in our engineering book is we're gonna draw a graphic model of what a solar panel looks like. So students drew a graphic model in their engineering books of how a solar panel works. Then the student's task was to design a solar panel for Mars. So they first had to get in groups of three or four to sketch out their prototype. And then students are instructed to build their prototype. The sun hits the solar panel, and then the proton goes to the P side, and then the negatively charged one goes to the N side. And then they move around, and they go in a circuit and then they come to the wires and that starts the light um, and then they come back and then they join it together again. The entire world thought I was dead, but I'm alive. Surprise. I gotta figure out a way to grow three years worth of food here. Luckily, I'm a botanist. Woo! I know how to save my wife. But if something goes wrong. They're not risking their lives. It's bigger than one person. No, it's not. So we just seen the trailer about the movie The Martian. What do we notice about the Martian surface? What do we notice about the Martian surface? Owen? It's kind of rocky. Very rocky. Very good. Yasser? Yeah, it's, not, it's not regular soil. It's red. It's not regular soil. It's red, kind of like our soil here in Georgia. Yes. Uh, Jonathan? He can't go outside. Why he can't go outside? Yes. His gas is that he can't breathe, so he has to stay within this certain habitat. So now that we've just researched the two types of energy resources, we are now going to support our position with a CER. So Peyton's going to read the guiding question on the CER for us today. Thank you. So 
For the claim portion of your CER, all you are doing is answering the guiding question. You're not giving me any evidence. You're not justifying why you pick which renewable energy resource that you decide to pick. You are just stating your claim. So if you're going to pick wind energy, you're going to say wind energy is the most feasible energy resource to use on Mars. If you're going to pick biomass, then you'll write biomass is the most feasible energy resource to use on Mars. The main focus of that prototype is that it has to look exactly like the sketch. So it's very interesting to see how students are, uh, become very creative to make a prototype that looks exactly like the sketch within the constraints that we set for building the prototype. So your task is to design with your groups a solar panel prototype in your engineering book. So turn to the very next free page. Excellent. So go ahead and talk with your group for about two minutes about how your solar panel will look and the design of your solar panel and then start sketching your design. And we also want to make a career connection because again, um, 21st century, we're completing in a global society. It's very important that students know the importance that what they're doing in the classroom relates outside the classroom. And once they see that connection, the students do really well with that and they're more engaged in a lesson. So they are required to build a prototype with certain constraints. And the main constraint is they can't go out and buy supplies. So that makes the playing field level for all learners in the room. And it makes the students become more creative because they can only use items that they get from home or items that they have in the classroom. Your first prototype's not going to be perfect, but it's a, it's a stepping stone for what you can do later. And then as you learn more information and gather more information, then you make upgrades and you make corrections to your initial prototype. Our solar panel is basically, it's shaped like a diamond. So say like the sun is right here, but then like the solar panel is right here. It can't get that much um, solar energy from the sun since it's not facing it at all. So then it can hit all the solar panels well, most of the solar panels with the sun. If the sun is directly overhead, right, and the sunbeams are coming straight down like this, I would want to hit all this surface area. So what modifications would I have to make to my solar panel so that when the sun is in the north, highest point in the northern sky in the summer on Mars, it's going to hit pretty much all of these faces on your diamond. So what other way would your solar panel need to move? Once students build their prototype, their first initial prototype, I, they present it in front of the class and I provide them with feedback. After I provide them with feedback, then the students are allowed to do a redesign and then present their final solar panel prototype. This is our solar panel. We have this little tracking device right here that like tell that can um, show you like the temperature based on how much sunlight is being absorbed. And like this gray part right here, it can like get if it gets darker, that means there's a lot of sunlight absorbed. And if it's like really light, then that means there's not a lot of sunlight absorbed. And then we were supposed to have like a little base right here, but we didn't have enough time for that. And then the tracking device also like can connect to the sunlight, so that's how the solar panel gets its sunlight. So this is a thermal sensor, and it tracks the sun. So it would track the hottest point on Mars, which is obviously the sun. So it would rotate towards the sun. It would tell the code box to tell the solar panel to rotate towards the sun. This is the motor and this lets the solar panel rotate in all directions so it can go backwards and point towards the sun. Um, this is a code box, like, so if something broke on the solar panel or something was 
like not working. There's, if there's a malfunction, you could code it to fix it. And this is a battery charger, so you would put uh, like a battery in there, a huge one, and then you would uh, close it, let it charge, and then take it out. And like maybe you can uh, power your base with it or power like um, maybe a, a vehicle, a small vehicle on there or a rover. And that's it. Good job. I know a lesson that has been successful when students take pride in their work. Um, they are sharing with their other teachers what they did in science class that day. And they are able to use in another lesson what they did in the previous project. So that is a huge hint to me that students have been successful with the activity we've done in class.